Um, my brothers and sisters, I greet you. I greet you in the name of the people of Uganda. I greet you in the name of those that are at large and those that are in prison. I greet you in the name of those that are living and those that are dead. I greet you in the name of those that are aware that they are under captivity and those that are oblivious. I bring greetings from the motherland. I want in a very, very special way to thank you for sacrificing your time and showing up at a very short notice. Look at this. You've not come for a show. You've not come for entertainment. You've left work. We don't take that for granted. I see brothers and sisters that are workaholics. I'm my brother, in Uganda, when we're only back to the Akola, I think I'm going to be here. But today, he's here. My brother, we don't take your time for granted. Thank you very much. I want also, in a very, very special way, to thank the leaders, the current and the outgoing leaders. I want to thank our brother, the outgoing leader of the diaspora, Kobe Daman and Elion Nambuizi. Why is it there? How many people you pull out of? That is your seat right there. That's right. We don't see, see you. Please come and take that seat. Clap for that man. For offering leadership in very tough times. We salute you, my brother. Offering leadership through the election. That election that many people say is an election from hell. Yeah. My brother. We don't take it for granted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank Comrade Dorothy Rubowa. This lady here is an iron lady for working under tough times, for always picking your call at midnight, in the dead of the night, in the morning, when you are at work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please clap for this lady here. These our outgoing leaders work under challenges. Challenges of arguments, challenges of everything. But you rose above all of it. We salute you. We've gone through a lot, ladies and gentlemen. Through divisions, but to see that we are all here. It is a win for us. And I want to send a message to anybody that was saying people power and NUP are not united. Museveni survives on our disunity. Museveni survives on us not standing together. But now I'm sure Museveni is going to get the area. Thank you, friends. Thank you very much for putting Uganda ahead of you. That is noble. We appreciate you. I want to salute our new leadership for taking the mantle and for, you know, asserting our values. I've been looking here, looking at the new leadership, looking at the inclusiveness, one of our values. I saw women here, leaders here. I'm one leader that believes in the power and strength of women. And you, our brothers and sisters, have showed us that you, we don't just say these things, we practice them. We don't only talk about inclusiveness, we practice it. We don't only talk about peaceful and orderly transition of power, we practice it. We've had a new leadership, we have an old leadership has handed over to new leadership which we also hand over and that is what we want to see in the new Uganda. We thank you and we salute you. We salute you, Comrade Kawama Daniel. Thank you for accepting the task, the challenge. We want to salute you, uh, Comrade uh, Marvin Mujuzi and we pray that your leadership is going to take us to the next level. We pray that God will guide us to build on the achievements of the former leadership so that by the time another leadership takes 
takes over from you. We are moving from glory to glory. We thank you. And I request you, ladies and gentlemen, for our support. We can't do this alone. We are representing you. Support them. Guide them. Capitalize on their strength. And help them mitigate their weaknesses. Um, my brothers and sisters, I cannot stop thanking our people for uniting. I cannot stop thanking our people for putting Uganda ahead. And uh, let me say this, we change leadership, and that is why in our new constitution, we even put term limits. I am here as the president of NUP, but I know that one time I'm not going to be the leader of NUP. And also after I take the presidency, I will also hand over peacefully. Yeah. And I want you to help me that why I am still the leader of NUP, my biggest achievement should be putting an end to Museveni's rule of blood. That is my dream. That is what I think about every day. But I can't do it alone. We have to do it together. And we can do it. And we shall do it. We are going to do that. Yeah. Now, friends, this is a special moment. We cannot have this in Uganda. We are a legitimate political party. Right. The law provides that we are free to associate. We are free to reach out to the people of Uganda. But you have seen what has been happening. You've seen that we cannot even have a football match. You saw what happened to Honorable Senyani, you saw what happened to Honorable Kawade, you saw what happened to my elder brother, Jama Ninyazi. Today, he's crippled. And he's going to be like that for quite some time. Why? Because he went to do party work. Because he went to meet Ugandans. Today, as we speak, the Honorable Susan Mugabe is in hospital. You saw the video. Military men, men, not women, thumping a female member of parliament. What is a crime? Having a meeting in her constituency. While the seven son is illegal. Because the serving military officer is forbidden from engaging in politics, partisan politics. But he's moving everywhere campaigning against the law, blunt attributes of the law. Yeah. So that is the impunity we are facing, ladies and gentlemen. That is what happens in Uganda. It continues. Abductions are happening as we speak right now. As we speak right now, many of our brothers and sisters are missing. I was speaking to our leaders earlier on and one of our mamas asked me not to talk about these things in our presence. I remember mama but you know we have to expose this but most importantly we have to remind our people to know what we are fighting. I would love to come here and just sing for you. I would love to come here and make money. Now when I count here, it's like a number dollar. I will be counting money. But now, we are talking about our problems. Because we must remind each other. It's until you know the magnitude of the problem back home that you will actively get involved. Until you know what we are going through. These criminals will come pick up one of our sisters, go and rape her. In our military uniform, with a national flag in Uganda, they will go and rape her. They arrest young men and castrate them. A national army, that is what is going on in our country. And we have to talk about it. I have to remind you about it so that you fight with all your mind. It is not just petty dictatorship, it is at the height of it, it is 
one million times worse than Idi Amin's time. That is what is happening in our country, Uganda. So, we are moving all over the world, reminding our brothers and sisters that we are living in a time that is worse than apartheid. These colonialists that came and took over our country, that is what they are doing. People are losing their land. That is exactly what is going on at home. So while we are here, ladies and gentlemen, let us remember what is home. It is terrible, it is terrible, it is terrible. The corruption is through the roof. My comrade Kauma said, the Baba will be saved. The Baba will be able to do something. The Baba will be able to do something. The Baba will be able to do something. Never And the thieves are not the petty thieves. No. The thieves, by thieves, I'm talking about the vice president of the country. I am talking about the Prime Minister of the country. I am talking about the Speaker of Parliament of Uganda. I am talking about the Minister of Finance. The Minister of Ethics and Integrity. That is what is happening. When the young men and women come out to peacefully and non-violently protest about the Bible, up to now they are in prison. But the thieves are being guarded. When you protest, Internationally, that's exactly what's happening in our country. So, when we see us here, we, we, we are not, you know, happy to, do, to be doing this. We are doing this work because we are desperate. Because those that were supposed to do it are quiet. The intellectuals are quiet. Religious leaders are quiet. Traditional leaders are quiet. We are desperate. We are on our own, brothers and sisters. So, with that saying, what's the way forward? What we do about it? We are fighting back. We are not giving up. We are fighting back. And I have good news for you. We are winning. We are winning. When you're fighting against a dictator, it is not a sprint. No. It is a marathon. You take five steps ahead. The dictator pushes you behind two steps. You have to, because the dictator is pushing back, we have to take ten steps. So that the you see, you're going to do the five steps. The two get and the two get twenty. Now do the marina two steps. The two pushing. Papa can do this. I would say. I know many of you are frustrated. But Yamaka, you invested everything. You paid for our campaign and we won. But we did not take the mandate because we are under captivity. But you come with Batani, one of our Bafa, one of our food day, one day, one day, one food day, one 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 day, I told you this before and I tell you this again that we are going to fight to free ourselves or we shall die trying to free ourselves. Yeah. So we are pushing and pushing and pushing. And as you know, the dictator is confused. He is surrounded. Now we told him that he is but it's desperate. And God is also on our side. God is on our side. Because if God was not on our side, then So, Katonda was saying, Ya Glogia. So we are winning, friends. We are winning. Sometimes God fights our own battles. You know? To prove that God is fighting for us. I mean, 
How much would it cost us to prove to the world that these are crazy people? When they abduct one of our brothers or our sisters tomorrow you see so let's keep going let's keep going we are going to win brothers and sisters we are going to win my main intention of meeting you one is to encourage you two is to keep communicating to you but most importantly in this meeting I want you to hear from you I want you to see us together so that it encourages you to unite. We have to be one block. We have to be together. A house divided against itself cannot stand. So let us unite. Let us put our differences on the side. In fact, our differences make us special. Some are men, some are women, some are Muslims, some are Christians. Some are, we are different tribes, different ethnicities, different backgrounds. Let us come together. Let us amplify what puts us together. Museveni is confused. He's surrounded. And to prove to you that he's surrounded, and he is Whenever Museveni is cornered, he will look for something to divert. You recently saw he was trying to divert us with an anti homosexual bill. Kubanga Mani, I want to be very conservative. Then he's bringing something to divert people. And I told you before that Museveni is using that as a diversion. Did he sign it? No.
you get demoralized. Mandela told us that after climbing the very steep hill and reaching the peak, and then you realize you're on the beginning, there's another hill. Let us keep going. I'll end by one story of a woman, a very powerful woman called Harriet Tubman. She was an American. She freed slaves, very many slaves, after she ran away from captivity. She reached there and so no, there's so many people I left behind. She would come back, they even nicknamed her Moses, because she was free in slaves. She is quoted to have said, I freed a thousand slaves. I could have freed more only if they knew that they were slaves. My brothers and sisters, we are slaves. In our own country, we are slaves. People like me, I can leave Uganda and leave out. But what about our brothers and sisters? You are here in America, you make that money. That money is more valuable and sweeter back home. But if those thieves, there's nothing you can do back home. We have to remove them. No choice. And those so the challenges are going to be many. The days are going to be many. You're going to see tears. I was in Washington yesterday and I told them there are two things that a man or woman brings in struggle. You will bring tears and you will bring sweat. I'll tell you that tears and sweat are both salted, but they give you different results. Your tears are going to give you sympathy. But your sweat is going to give you victory. Choose one. Let us sweat while we move. Let us keep moving. Harry Tubman told us that when you hear the dogs, keep moving. When you see the torches, keep moving. When you hear the gunshots, keep moving. Keep moving if you want to test sweet freedom. Keep moving. Let us keep moving. Let us keep going. We shall not stop. We should not stop. We must not stop. I want to thank you very much for listening to me. And I want to request you ladies and gentlemen, whoever has a question, please keep it brief. And please keep it positive. Let us, you know, keep positive, keep going, so that we leave this place more energized, more motivated, and more united. I want to thank you very much, and I pray that the Almighty God keeps you safe. Thank you very much for God and my country. People power. Power, power. People power. Power, power. People power. Our power is our power. And you be everywhere. Thank you, Mr. President, for that beautiful speech. We will always love to listen to you more and more and more. But in the interest of time, Your Excellency, we have uh, our beautiful sister from Burundi. She's here with us. And uh, she just wants to shake your hand. Just want to shake your hand. Uh -huh. Come on, you're welcome.